Yeah, we shall start. So thank you everyone for your presence in our webinar about health tech opportunities in Brazil. My name is Amanda. I'm startup and innovation project manager at Swiss Next Brazil, responsible for startup engagement in our Inno Swiss Market Entry Camp. And today I have two great guests uh, joining me to tell you a little bit of the opportunities for Swiss startups in the Brazilian market. We have Claire Botero from Daza and from Kubo Health. She is responsible for scouting and strategy of DAZA in Brazil and in Latin America. And they are running this very interesting open innovation program. And Marco Aurelio is a partner in the healthcare practice at Tosini Freire uh, lawyer firm. Um, we will share a little bit of what it is to do business in such a complex and huge country as Brazil. We ask you to send all of your questions through our Q and um, box that appears in the bottom part of your page as guests. Um, and also to send any comments in the chat box to panelists and attendees. So everyone can see your contribution to um, to our conversation today. Um, for those of you who don't know us yet, Swissnex is a platform of connections between Swiss stakeholders in education, research, and innovation. And we are here to help you in your local landing in Brazilian territory. So Claire, if you're ready, I will hand over to you so you can start your presentation. Okay, so I'm Claire, I'm working for DASA and I'm focusing on the part of clinical analysis and genomics for the part of uh, strategic scouting and uh, innovation. So I will just present uh, quickly what is DASA. DASA is the main diagnostic laboratory of South America. We are doing like more than 300 million uh, diagnostic per year which is really interesting with this company is the capillarity because we have more like 700 uh, unity care in brazil is really uh, decentralized uh, we have a lot of brands also depending on which kind of population we can uh, we, we want to take care and uh, for the part of diagnostic we are really um, doing a uh, radiology uh, imagery which is more about pathology and the part of clinical analysis which is uh, and genomics which is uh, the part i will focus to, uh, today on the presentation um, what is really important to know it's uh, in november 2019 uh, daza uh, merge with uh, impar impar is the, a network of hospital there are nine hospital in brazil uh, in Rio de Janeiro, Santa pa Sao Paulo, and Brasilia mainly, and with the group Santa Celina, which is a group of home care. So we deci they decide to merge and create an all ecosystem within the same company with uh, the objective uh, to develop a healthy ecosystem. So to diminish the facturation for uh, private health insurance and to create a, a, a cycle of care for patients which are really uh, focused on value-based and improve the quality of life of these people. So it's, the, it's really important because the, the part of diagnostic now is one part of the company and we have the, the part of hospital and uh, on care and the part of diagnostic uh, and mainly for point of care uh, we can uh, find uh, this uh, solution in home care and we can find also for acute disease uh, really a lot of uh, interesting things uh, for hospital. So we are really talking for the whole uh, ecosystem today. Uh, now I will uh, present uh, the health tech, biotech ecosystem and trends uh, in Brazil mainly. Uh, what uh, we need to know, first of all, uh, Brazil is really uh, a huge country. We have more like 200 million uh, people uh, living in Brazil and just 25% uh, have access to private health insurance. Uh, the private ins insurance in 2018, I guess it was 42 billion rise of, um, of, uh, of spends. So is a really huge number. But uh, what is important is to see the problematic of this country. It's really nice 
uh, the fact that we have a universal system of healthcare uh, public, but uh, we find a lot of uh, problem of process and a lot of things that um, um, have a big cost for, for all the ecosystem. So we identify that uh, 400 startups was uh, created uh, in the past uh, five years in Brazil and 81% uh, are dedicated uh, to e-health, so are dedicated to improve process, uh, to democratize the access uh, to healthcare in Brazil. And so it's really about software marketplace, um, telelaud or the, the, the fact uh, to, to, to load uh, diagnostic uh, from everywhere, really based on that. And we have like just 19% uh, of companies which are biotechnologies. Uh, I will explain after the barriers uh, to and try on this market of biotechs in Brazil. But uh, this slide was mainly to, to show the, 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 the difference of uh, proportion between uh, both. Uh, for the repartition uh, in Brazil is mainly in southeast of Brazil that you can find uh, the, the earth of uh, biotechs and health techs uh, business, uh, mainly in Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, Rio Grande do Sul, and um, e Minas Gerais also. Um, you can see the part which is uh, yellow, it's the uh, main region for startup biotechnologies, which are also almost the same, Minas Gerais, São Paulo, Rio, Rio de Janeiro, Rio Grande do Sul. My, uh, so what I would like to, to present uh, mainly is uh, the barrier to entry on this market. Uh, we can see here the, the trends of investment in Brazil. We have seen that in 2018, there is a big, uh, big interest uh, for VC venture capital, but uh, for 122 uh, companies which was uh, investing in 2018, just 1% was uh, biotechnologies and 6% uh, was uh, FTEX. So it's more or less two companies in uh, biotechnologies and nine companies in FTEX was investing in 2018. And you can find in, in, uh, beside the, the name of uh, investors which are dedicated to the health sectors, but uh, what is really important is to, to understand that uh, it's a really high risk uh, investment uh, area, biotechnologies uh, need long term investment. Uh, the return on investment also uh, will take time. So it's a sector which is not really, really fancy, really sexy for, for investors here. And they have um, more the, the, the willingness to invest in the part of uh, health techs, e health, which will be processed that you can implement uh, really fast and you can have a return on investment and a go to market really, uh, really faster than with biotechnology. So the focus is mainly on this one. And we have a lot of also barriers, which are the, the fact of uh, the equipment in Brazil is really expensive for the, because uh, you, you need to, to import and there are a lot of taxes and all these things. So it's really complicated to, to start a project and maybe uh, it's quite similar also, but we can compare a bit with France is the fact that um, there are a lot of uh, research uh, within uh, academic research, within universities, uh, within institution and all these things, but uh, a really few companies in biotechnologies will, will go uh, uh, until uh, the market and will develop really a, a startup a company uh, to propose a, a product. So the gap is mainly there. There are a few, few investments which allow this kind of company to in, evolve in Brazil and uh, for for us, uh, as, uh, as a big diagnostic laboratory, we decide so to create um, a partnership with uh, Kubo, uh, which is one of our um, best, uh, biggest uh, health innovation hubs uh, in Brazil. But it's mainly to, 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 to improve the ecosystem for health techs, and we cannot find a lot of solution uh, for us as a disruptive solution to propose a new kind of diagnostics uh, in uh, Brazil and Latin America. Uh, quickly on this slide, so there are the main hub of innovation uh, which, has, uh, which are correlated uh, with uh, healthcare 
uh, Eftex Biotech in Brazil. Uh, we have just two Biotech Ton and uh, Biominas uh, in uh, Minas Gerais, which are really dedicated to biotechnologies and disponibilize uh, laboratories, uh, facilities, and this kind of things within uh, the hub. All the rest, uh, District or uh, Eretz, so Open Door, Kub, Elfinova Hub, are really focused on a digital solution to improve process. So we can see after the, this uh, few slides, the, the split between biotech and uh, digital health in Brazil. And it's really, it's really interesting uh, to see that the, 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 the lack of, um, of presence of biotechnologies. There are a lot of, um, uh, right now there are a lot of um, uh, action which are put in place to develop this ecosystem. There are hub of innovation which will open after the, the crisis, uh, I guess. Um, in Sao Paulo, which will be dedicated also for biotechnologies uh, with uh, partnership with Term Official and all these things. So they start to improve uh, this market, but uh, it's, still, uh, it's still quite complicated uh, to, to, to develop uh, this part. It is why uh, my job is mainly to looking for companies uh, and mainly out of Brazil to answer of your needs on the part of clinical analysis and genomics. Uh, so quickly, the top 10 of startups uh, from uh, District 12 tax reports uh, in 2019. Uh, we can see that is a uh, eye clinic, Mehmed. Uh, Mehmed is like a prescription, digital prescription. Eye clinic is uh, management of clinics. Uh, I, Dr. Consulta is like a, a kind of um, of uh, doctor cabinet, uh, cheap doctor cabinet available for for, for the public. And in all these 10 startups, we have just one, which is iLab, which is uh, in the, which is dedicated to point of care diagnostic. And uh, for it's one, 10% uh, of uh, one company over 10, 10% of this company uh, have interest for us. And after we have the, the, the issue of maturity, iLab is really a mature one, is really an interesting solution that uh, we are uh, studying uh, within DASA because it's a new, new way of, um, of approximation of uh, diagnostic for, for the near future to do like point of care and, um, and uh, fast, um, fast diagnostics. So right now I will present uh, quickly the 2001 Uh, are mainly for genomics, uh, neurodegenerative disease, cardiovascular biomarker. Um, they say my internet connection is unstable. If uh, there are some problem, tell me. Um, so we will focus on neurodegenerative disease, epigenic, cardiovascular, progenic risk, um, and DNA circulant uh, for 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 diagnostic in genomics mainly. Uh, we have uh, already Gene 1, which is really strong on the market and have a really, really big portfolio to propose uh, on this part. But uh, we all, always uh, are interesting about uh, liquid biopsy and all these kind of things uh, for this part to have uh, to study. Uh, for the part of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, we focus a lot of, um, on score risk because uh, we are a lot of based, uh, we, we base our work on value based and we want to, to, to find uh, algorithms which will be able to, to help um, our doctors to take decisions uh, as, well, uh, as well as possible, as fast as possible with prioritization of cases also. Um, and uh, hematology, it's uh, also uh, the, the digitalization and uh, the use of algorithms of, uh, on hematology is also a focus for us. Uh, we already did uh, that uh, last year with pathology. It was uh, really interesting, really challenging, and uh, a lot of companies are working on this field. It's really uh, mainly from uh, Europe and United States. It was really interesting to, to implement uh, this solution. Uh, 
Uh, for the part of uh, non-invasive collect, uh, we want to find also a solution which will allow to people to, to arrive to do collect uh, in themselves. So that's really important for us. Uh, because we want to access uh, this kind of uh, the diagnostic for everyone and uh, limit uh, the, the fear of uh, collect which uh, happens. And for the part of uh, point of care, so it's all about decentralization. Uh, as I told about uh, iLab in Brazil, uh, we are looking for also other solution which will be to, which will be dedicated for other kind of, uh, of pathologies. And for the part of cost e effectiveness, we are also working a lot about uh, this part to find a new, new kind of diagnostic uh, to allow to re redirectionate uh, treatment, uh, to allow the diminution of chemotherapy, chemotherapy for, for instance, this kind of things, uh, which will have an impact as I, as I show to you, uh, DASA is uh, part of uh, the whole ecosystem with uh, IMPAR and uh, the group Sintacelline. So this kind of uh, cost effectiveness will be to diminish the facturation uh, of the hospital and to at the end have uh, the healthiest ecosystem possible for the private health insurance. So we are working on several projects. I will show you uh, international partners that we have um, in, uh, in uh, working with us, uh, Sophia Genetics, which is uh, from Switzerland. Uh, we are working with, uh, with them for the part of uh, radiomics and also the parts of uh, genomics. So this project uh, was uh, uh, start uh, last year, really interesting. Uh, the part of Natera also, we are working with, uh, with them and uh, in, the, in the way of uh, tech transfer. So we will uh, integrate uh, the way of doing the diagnostic within DASA diagn uh, Diagnostic Laboratory. That is also really interesting because we are open for all of kind of uh, partnership. Could be sell side, buy side, could be tech transfer. Could, we are really open about uh, develop together and after to, to spread uh, the solution in all uh, Latin America. So um, the, 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 the principle to, to, to have a partnership uh, with DASA is really to have a strong position in South America for, for startups which are interesting to, to work together and to allow to disponibilize uh, this solution uh, for, for all our uh, unity care in uh, Latin America. So it's really a big market. It's uh, DASA is really an, an interesting partner uh, to, to implement this kind of solution. And, um, and that's it. And if you have questions, here there are my contacts. Uh, you can uh, send it by mail see if you are interested to, to, to continue about a more uh, deeper conversation on your solution. For me, that's it. Merci Claire. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, it's super interesting to hear you and all of DASA plans for uh, new partnerships. Um, so before I give the word to Marco, we are launching... Yeah, I'm back on video. Can you see me? Yes. Um, I'm not, not sure if you have to stop sharing your screen, Claire. Uh, maybe I will let it if people want to take a uh, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So before we hand over to Marco, we want to um, launch a poll here in your in your screen. It will show up, pop up for you in a minute, just so, uh, so we can understand a little bit of the public we are, of the audience we're talking to. If you are a Swiss startup and you know about InnoSwiss internationalization program, which we will talk about by the end of the webinar, um, if you have never heard about it, if you're not a Swiss startup, just please answer the poll with the most appropriate answer to your profile. Philip, can you see the number of answers? Could you tell me when we can finalize the poll? 
I see there are two incoming questions here um, about market opportunities and key success factors for Swiss startups. I will just leave these questions for the end of the presentation so Claire and Marco can both tackle and input their answers to these questions. All right, so for those of you who have not voted yet, could you please select your answer so we can finalize the pool in a minute. So I, I answer after, that's it. Yes, Clef, please. Okay. So we can just control time a little bit better over here. Philip, do we have the stats on how many people answer the poll? All right, so I think we can, we're missing five, um, sorry, nine people voting. All right, so now that our poll is finalized, can we close the poll, Philip, please? Now that it's closed, um, I would like to hand over to Marco Aurelio. Marco, thank you so much for joining us today. We know you are a long partner of Swiss Next. You've been with us in many different occasions. So thank you so much for taking up the invitation to join us in another one. Um, I'll let you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your background and then hand over to your presentation, okay? Okay. Hello, it's a pleasure being here. My name is Marco Aurelio Torrontegui. I am partner in Fosili Freire Advogados. I am partner in life science and healthcare practice area. My background is regulatory, yeah, but we work with transactional and regulatory matters related to um, the companies, uh, you know, um, focus on um, healthcare and, and life science. So. Uh, this is uh, about the pharma companies, the medical devices companies, of course, the health techs, the companies that want to be sometimes more tax than health and then are struggling with the regulatory uh, standards and so on. Um, I have a, um, a presentation, just three slides to help me to, to, to organize the time with you because we have uh, just a, a couple of minutes to to the presentation uh, to, to have time to your questions. Then let me share my screen and please tell me if we have any problem, okay? Here we go. Okay, so um, I think we, uh, I'm sharing now my presentation to you and uh, well, we'll talk about health tech opportunities in Brazil uh, related to diagnostics or the, the companies that contribute uh, to, to the, the health system or to the health uh, services in Brazil. And I would like to start with uh, an overview about the companies that want to, to uh, launch their business, uh, businesses in Brazil. Then the second step will be talk a little bit about the products. What are, what are we talking about? What are the, 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 the diagnostic pro, pro, uh, products in Brazil? Uh, and in the end, challenges and opportunities um, uh, in Brazil related to my era, it means related to the regulatory environment, okay? Um, so, first, a kind of uh, 101 regulatory process in Brazil about uh, diagnostics uh, products. Um, the, the, the companies um, in Brazil uh, have to, to, to deal with lots of regulations and uh, authorizations, licenses. You know, Brazil is a complex uh, a country with a federal level laws, state level laws, and some local laws from the municipalities. 
but we can um, try to to organize this this uh, environment uh, talking about um, um, four main authorizations or or licenses to the companies um, the products for diagnosis fits into the health product category uh, according to our regulation this is a broad category lots of products are in this name health product and but we uh, we will talk about this in, in a while um, first it's necessary that the company and that each establishment of the company um, man that manufactures imports exports distributes storages and and or transports products for diagnosis they shall uh, obtain um, a federal license named AFI, Autorização de Funcionamento de Empresa. This, this operating federal license is granted by Anvisa, our federal uh, agency, agency. And then uh, the company and each establishment of the company um, shall obtain uh, the local sanitary license uh, named the LEF, uh, a Licença de Funcionamento, granted by the local health authority. Um, the third step is, is well, once uh, the company is licensed, uh, um, now it's time to approve the product, you know. And then we have a, a huge concept of uh, market authorization, uh, in Portuguese, registro, or some kind of uh, uh, different um, uh, market authorization related to the level of risk of each product. So for each different product, uh, uh, we can have uh, um, three, three main uh, possibilities of market authorization. Uh, a notice, an enrollment, or uh, the full register. In Portuguese, in Portuguese we, can, we can talk about uh, notificação, cadastro, or uh, registro uh, related to, this, to these products. And this de de depends on the, the level of risk, you know, the high risk uh, means the, the, the obligation to a full register. Uh, the low risk means the possibility of just uh, an enrollment or even a notice uh, to the health authority before you launch your product uh, on the Brazilian market. Um, but we have a, a, a fourth um, regulatory um, obligation related to the GMP, the Good Manufacturing Practices. Uh, you know, uh, each manufacturer shall uh, uh, be compliant with some good manufacturing practices to, to prove that the product is safe, the pro product is efficient, and so on and so forth. And in, in, when we talk about products for diagnostics and, and health products in general, um, we have the, the obligation for a certificate, uh, we mean uh, uh, CBPF, Certificado de Boas Práticas de Fabricação, or GMP certification, um, that is, is mandatory for the high risk, higher risk uh, products. So if your product is a low risk product, you will not be uh, obliged to grant the certification, but of course, you remain uh, uh, responsible for be compliant with the good manufacturing practices uh, itself. And then uh, we can resume this in a, in a short timeline uh, uh, about the, 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 this, this four uh, steps. So first, uh, the company register uh, before Anvisa's website, then there is a local sanitary inspection, uh, the, the application for the federal license, the application for the local license, you grant a, a, a GMP certification, and then you, you can uh, grant the market authorization approval. It's important to mention that uh, um, you can ap apply for a market authorization when you apply for a, a good manufacturing practices certificate. Then you can uh, um, um, have some some more efficient timeline in this way, but as a matter of fact, uh, the term of for analysis may vary a lot. So uh, sometimes this is a long run. Sometimes 
uh, we have the opportunity for a fast track. For instance, the uh, COVID-19 related uh, products are nowadays in a very uh, important uh, um, uh, fast track in Brazil. Some, some of these products are being approved by Visa in a couple of days. And, and then we have a fast track uh, um, regulations and, and not only related to COVID, but we, we had fast track regulations before the, the, the COVID-19, but nowadays we are using a lot this kind of, of regulation and it is working. You know, Visa is a very important uh, agents worldwide. And Visa is recognized by other countries and, and I think we have a good health authority in Brazil and, and scientific oriented, technically oriented, and this is, this is very good and, and works uh, uh, well. Um, then we can, I think we can um, move forward to the second slide related to uh, what could be a product for diagnosis in Brazil. And we have, we, as I mentioned before, we have a, a broad uh, a concept uh, this is the concept of health product. Is a concept in our legislation since the 1976. So it's it's not a, a current concept, but it is good a good concept because it is broad. Uh, and in this broad concept, we can have lots of different kinds of products. For example, the medical devices uh, itself, like magnetic resonance uh, imaging scanners like uh, the x-ray scanners and so on and so forth. Um, the COVID-19 tests, they are in the mainstream nowadays and uh, are also um, health products in Brazil. Uh, some kind of softwares, and here, let me stop a while to talk a little bit about softwares in Brazil. This is a very interesting point and, and remember Claire, uh, when, when I was in, in, in uh, Daza to, to speak to, to your uh, uh, employees about uh, the software regulations, it was, it was an, an amazing um, um, speaking. Um, but software is, is a very good uh, um, matter nowadays, a very um, uh, interesting matter nowadays, because um, we have a, a, a different uh, a, a chalk among generations of legislation here. Uh, let me try to explain this. Uh, in 1976, um, we, uh, we, uh, we established in our legislation the broad concept of health product. Um, the regulation of this concept was set forth by a resolution from Visa from 2001. Then, okay, in 2001, we regulated what means health products, medical devices, and so on. Uh, but in 2001, uh, it was before the, the uh, you know, before the apps, before the, the mobile uh, connectivity. And then, of course, our regulation from 2001 uh, was not talking about softwares, was not talk talking about the apps in our mobiles was not talking about wearables and and so on um, but the the concepts are interpreted by Anvisa and Anvisa each three years publish uh, their uh, regulatory agenda it's the list of the matters that the Anvisa uh, uh, is thinking about and probably they will regulate this, this matter in the next uh, few years. And software regulation is there in a visa regulatory agenda for long term. But we do not have yet a regulation specific for, uh, for softwares in Brazil. And this is because a visa just uh, published a, a technical note. This is not a, a a uh, formal rule, but is a, a formal uh, uh, understanding about the, the rules. And um, well, in this technical note, Anvisa tried to organize the concept of software, the kinds, the, the different kinds of softwares, and to say uh, in a nutshell that we have three different kinds of 
softwares um, according to one visa uh, uh, standpoint. The first kind of software is the software that is just an informative software. This is not a, a software for diagnosis, neither for diagnosis nor for treatment. Then the software is not related to a visa regulation. And okay, you can launch the software on the market and you, and it, it's not necessary to grant any approval from, from health authority. But the second kind of software uh, is when the software uh, itself helps to diagnosis, to treatment, and then this software uh, will be considered a medical device itself. Then you have to grant um, a marketing authorization before you launch the software in the market. And the third kind of software in Brazil is the uh, embedded software, when the software is embedded in other medical device, and then it's easy to the answer. Of course, uh, uh, the company shall uh, uh, grant a marketing authorization for the, the medical device, and one of these components, uh, one of these elements is the embedded software. This is a, a, not a, a, a huge problem to, to understand. So uh, um, this, this kind of, of health products are very interesting, and sometimes we have some uh, gray zones in Brazilian regulation related to softwares. And probably in the um, next few years, we will have a proper regulation uh, regarding Um, product uh, uh, I mentioned in this slide is um, the products for in vitro diagnosis. Uh, they are subject to a regulation on, of their own. And sorry, he is, they are telling me that my connection is unstable. Please let me know if uh, uh, if we have. Uh, I think I think now is okay. We can still hear you, Marco. You can okay. go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, then the, the fourth uh, kind of product is the product for in vitro diagnosis. And uh, there is a special category and with a special regulation different from the other medical devices, the other health product. And here we have the same uh, concept, the same idea of levels of risk. It means uh, the more risky is the product, um, the, the more regulated uh, it should be. Uh, so we have some products, for example, products that detect the presence of, of or, the, or exposure to agents transmissible by blood are subject to register, whereas uh, uh, other products uh, may be subject just to notification. Uh, but we have lots of, of examples here and uh, here. And, and you know, uh, when you think about uh, to launch a, a software or to launch a, a, a new technology or a new solution related to the diagnosis in Brazil, it's important to understand uh, deeply uh, how it works and what will be uh, the level of risk uh, 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 regarding Brazilian standards. And this is a very technical uh, uh, analysis that should be done in a case-by-case in -case basis. But in the end of the day, the general rule is the more risky are your product for the health, the more regulated uh, it will, will probably uh, be. And then uh, my last slide, and maybe the most interest for you that are uh, thinking about opportunities in, in business in Brazil, as uh, the challenges and advantages. We could uh, list lots of challenges, lots of advantages uh, 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 related to enter in Brazilian market. But I, I try to, to, to mention just uh, a couple of these uh, challenges and advantages to help us to discuss today. Um, one of the main challenges in Brazil is that Anvisa rarely accepts proof for, of compliance with the foreign authorities as a certification of the manufacturers and products compliance with the Brazilian regulation. Uh, in almost all cases, we, the requirements set by Anvisa needs to be certified by Anvisa itself. Uh, of course, we have uh, uh, one 
important exception in this uh, general rule. And this exception is the first of the main advantages in the same slide. And we, I, I, I am talking about the MDSAP, the Medical Device Single Wallet Program. Uh, it's a program that allows uh, the conduct of a single regulatory audit of a medical device manufacturer's quality management system uh, that uh, satisfies the requirements of multiple regulatory jurisdictions. We are talking about the uh, Australian TGA, Brazilian uh, Visa, Health Canada, uh, Japan, and the Ministry of Health uh, in Japan, and the FDA in the United States. And you know, it's it's uh, um, interesting to 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 um, notice that Brazilian authority is uh, be among uh, some of the most uh, important health authorities uh, in the world. And you know. Uh, besides this, these health authorities mentioned in the slides, the MDSAP program uh, has uh, two uh, observers, the World, World Health Organization and the uh, um, uh, European Union. They are observers of this uh, uh, international cooperation uh, process. And then we have, this is a, 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 a news in, in MDSAP. We have two new affiliate members, uh, Unmat from Argentina and uh, the Minister of Food and Drug Safety uh, from Korea. Um, um, as far as I know, they are not full members, um, but they are uh, entering in the system. And this is, a, this is interesting because once we have uh, uh, an audit from any of these authorities, uh, Brazilian authority and visa uh, will accept the audit report. And then this is, will help a lot the company uh, to launch its product in Brazil. Um, but we have other uh, challenges in Brazil, like the, uh, uh, um, the, the huge documentation required, uh, the timeline, and so on and so forth. And then, well, the, the regulatory, the health regulatory is just one part of the, the, the regulatory uh, uh, um, broad um, uh, uh, obligation in Brazil. We have, uh, the company have different, different, uh, uh, different uh, um, authorizations from other authorities like tax authorities, custom authorities, then and this environment, Brazil is a very complex and we, we don't have just one authorization. We have lots of different authorizations to, to launch a, a product in Brazilian market. But in a nutshell, I can conclude that I think in Brazil, we have more advantage than challenges. In, in, uh, because uh, once Anvisa is very important, as I mentioned, uh, uh, Anvisa is part of MDSAP. Um, once your product is registered, or, or authorized by a visa, probably they will be fit the standards and the regulatory conditions to other companies in South America, Latin America in general. Uh, so it's a good, good uh, uh, it's very good for, for the companies that want to, to have a, a global uh, uh, business or a multinational business to have a, a Brazilian certifications. Uh, this show can show that uh, your product fits on other regulatory uh, um, standards and and then we we uh, i'm totally uh, at your uh, uh i'm at your entire disposal and please keep in touch thank you very much thank you very much marco for this great presentation regulatory issues are always challenging no matter where you go so it's great that our network can count on such an expert like yourself to help us navigate in this area. Thank you a lot. So now before we jump into questions, I just want to share, I think you need to, to stop sharing your screen, Michael. Okay, okay, great. okay thank you. Thank you. So I will now share my own screen to tell you a little bit of the um, opportunities that InnoSwiss and SwissNext Network offer for Swiss startups aiming to internationalize, internationalize their business. Um, I will encourage you again to send your questions in our Q&A box so we can answer them after um, 
the short presentation. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. Let me just share my own screen. So share. Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you, Claire. So for those of you um, who are Swiss startups and are wondering how you can move, um, you can take this move of coming to Brazil or going to a different country to internationalize your business. This is the project, the type of service that InnoSwiss and Swiss Next Network offer for you. Um, we are present in a variety of locations in the US. We are in San Francisco, New York, and Boston. Also in London, Jerusalem, Bangalore, Shanghai, and all the other Chinese cities, which I will not dare to pronunciate the, the name. Um, and here at Swiss Next Brazil, we are ready to support you in coming to Sao Paulo or Rio. And we can do that by, by, tailor by making a tailor-made program to your business. So if you are already a startup that is part of InnoSwiss coaching program, you can apply for an internationalization camp that can be a validation or an entry camp. The difference between them is basically the stage where your startup is laying on. Um, if a validation market camp is your, um, is your necessity, we will guide you through that process. And if you are in a later stage of development of your product, of your service, we will probably recommend a market entry camp for you. Um, what SwissNext does is that we guide you through all the application process that needs to be built to be pitched for InnoSwiss. We make this, um, this recommendation for InnoSwiss International Committee for you to come. And once you are here, we will set up an agenda for you that will um, support you in the milestones you want to achieve. And these milestones can be things such as understanding what are the regulatory needs you have for your product, software, and et cetera in the country, to already getting to know potential customers or promoting a networking event to activate the local network around your area of acting. Um, this, sorry, I'll just pass to the next slide. So this is a little bit of how your agenda would look like coming to a market validation or entry camp with us. And after all this process is done, um, me and my colleague Naida, we deliver this camp or in Rio or in Sao Paulo. So I have here my email address and also Nidas. If you want to get in touch, even if you're not part of InnoSwiss camp yet, we can put you in touch with the people back in Switzerland that will help you to get into this coaching program. Um, so please just write us. We are here to support you and it will be our pleasure to do so. Um, so that's it from my side and I wanna take the time we still have to jump into the questions that came up in our Q&A box. So I believe they can be both for Claire and Marco. So I would start with Claire, um, but Marco, please feel free to, to pitch in um, for the answers too. And the first one um, will be, where do you see the major market opportunities for Swiss startups from your experience and your observation? So I, I think uh, I, I told a bit about this uh, lack of uh, investment to, to arrive to have some companies with uh, uh, a maturity, interesting maturity to, to do business with. So I guess the, the main opportunity for biotech companies in Brazil is really, or for, for health companies in Brazil, is really biotech companies to enter in this market. and. Um, to, to find a partnership to, 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 to enter in this market and to, to expand, uh, to spread uh, the commercialization thanks to this partnership after in Latin America, because we have really a big lack of solution for, for all about uh, deep technologies. Yes, I, I just, just want to, to, to maybe contribute with this answer because in Brazil, we have a, um, a very interesting system. Um, it's a continent. 
<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we have more than 200 million people in a public health system that by the constitution uh, may be obliged to uh, render services for all of the people to provide uh, health technologies for all the people. And we have in our Minister of Health uh, the par department, a department uh, focused on evaluate health technologies and decide what will be uh, uh, provided by the public health system, what will not be provided by the public health system. But uh, this is a great discussion. Uh, lots of patient, uh, 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 patient advocacy organizations, very, very active in Brazil. Then uh, is an environment for uh, uh, lots of opportunities, not only to sell health technologies to uh, privately, but also to sell health technologies to the public health system. Yes, for sure. Great. Um, the next question, just being mindful of the time we have, um, is what do you think are the key success factors to raise capital from Brazilian venture capital companies? Uh, so for my opinion, uh, we have some funds right now which start to develop uh, their activity on biotech companies uh, like uh, Europharma, which is a really good uh, brand of uh, uh, medicine in Brazil. And uh, also some VC funds dedicated like uh, Naya Capital, which will uh, dedicate the part of this fund to biotechs. But uh, for me, the, the main issue in Brazil that uh, you already need to have a product which is uh, at, at least an MVP and a product which is uh, really near of going to market and mainly they are investing in products which are already on market and with scale-ups. So for, to, to have investment from VC in Brazil, for me, you already have to to, to show the attractiveness uh, and uh, the uh, financial uh, return on your product. And it is why it is uh, complicated for the part of investment in really early stage companies uh, to, to, to go through the clinical uh, trials or these kind of things. There are really few investments. So for me in Brazil, if you want to get the interest of investors, uh, you already need to have a, a, a solution uh, ready for, for, for to, to go to market and uh, really uh, always with uh, MVP and at least uh, with uh, one client so which is doing a proof of concept uh, to, to tangibilize uh, the, the, the solution of the company. Anything from your, from your side, Marco, or should we yes. move on to... Yes, uh, I agree. We have some, some funds in Brazil that are, that are um, focused on that. I think I agree with Claria. Perfect. So we just have one more question I want to address. Um, we had a question about market barriers, but I think you've touched base that aspect in your presentation. So I'll skip this one. Um, and there is another question about the new directive 349 from Anvisa that helps the registration process of equipment that can help against COVID-19. Is there a list of equipment that are covered by this directive? Marco, would you pitch in for this one? Uh, yes, we, we have... Um, we don't have... Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know about a, a, a list of uh, uh, um, closed list about the drugs. We, we, we are looking with our clients is that um, anyone that thinks that have a, a great solution are presenting to health authorities and health authorities are deciding in a week. I'm not kidding. This is unbelievable in Brazil. A health authority deciding in a week or in a couple of days. And we, we don't have a specific list but we have a, a regulation open to any kind of solution, any kind of contribution to, to um, this, this very difficult situation that is COVID in, in Brazil. And this is not related only to, to the new technologies. This is very important for some um, uh, um, startups or for some health techs in Swiss. Uh, sometimes, uh, not a new technology, but, but an, an old, old technology may be used in a, in a different way. 
and then we are looking for um, new new possibilities for the old technologies too. This is very interesting in in Brazil nowadays and and maybe in the, the whole world. Perfect. Thank you very much. So before we finish our webinar today, I would just like to. Thank you again, Claire and Marco, for being here. Also like to thank some very special guests that are in our audience. So Rocio Robinson from the University of St. Gallen, which is a very close partner in the implementation program, uh, the AIT program that we have. Also Marcel from Inno Suisse, thank you so much for being with us. Um, and also Pedro Neves from the Brazilian um, Chamber of Commerce in Geneva. It's great to, to have you with us. Um, and also all the guests that were here today that took the time to listen to some of these opportunity with us. As we mentioned, we are here to help any Swiss startup wanting to come to the Brazilian market. You have our email addresses and please feel free to reach out to us. Um, and yeah, we are here to help. So Claire, Marco, do you have any final remarks you want to leave for us? Claire, please. First. So on my side, uh, feel free to, to contact me. I've seen that uh, there are Brazilian startups which are participating to the call also from Switzerland. So both feel free to contact uh, and we will uh, have a, a deeper conversation. Well, I'd like to thank you, Swiss Next, Amanda, Claire, and all the attendees. Thank you very much and health and stay safe. Thank you. So that's it for today. Thank you everyone for joining. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep tuned to our website so we can share the next webinars um, with all of you. We will share a feedback form uh, just after we finish this session where you can tell us what we did well, what we can improve, themes for next webinar so we can keep sharing a little more of what the complex, complex Brazil is with all of you. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Ciao. Bye. Bye.